So here we are with uh, Cobweb in a remote uh, application. Here we've got a path uh, which we, one could suppose that uh, people will approach down. Um, we have a standard Cobweb kit. This is a Cobweb SF, including three transmitters and one receiver. Uh, this receiver can actually take up to eight, but uh, we've just got the uh, three here today. Also got one PIR unit, infrared detector, one brake wire. You won't be able to see the wire on there on this video, but there is a wire sticking out of there, and one blank plate for pure movement detection, tamper detection. I'll show you how to fit all of those in place. But uh, let's uh, set the uh, kit up. Okay, case one. I'm going to set the PIR up. Uh, to protect this path down here. Anyone approaching here will trigger it. Um, I found a convenient tree. I put the PIR so that the it's um, wedged in some way and the significantly the um, shading element, the chamfered element is towards the top. That uh, improves the uh, approach performance. I'm going to stay where it is. We can use tape or wire to hold that in place. I'll uh, wire it in before I conceal it. Okay, here it is. I've used a little bit of uh, twisted wire to hold it in place. String, rubber, anything you can get. And then I'll conceal it conveniently with uh, a few leaves. It's important to not have any vegetation moving around in front of it. Um, but. Uh, as long as you've got sufficient grounds for coverage of the various wires, that should be fine to go. We're putting a temporary installation here. You could obviously obscure it a lot better with the wooden bark. I think you'll agree that that is pretty obscure, especially from a distance. That's not going to be noticed. Um, I'll get onto the uh, actual connection of it now. Here's the antenna. Concealed conveniently in, uh, in amongst some leaves. I will put, uh, I'll conceal it still further like that. The leaves aren't going to interfere with the, uh, the device at all. Um, and I think I'll agree that that is pretty much hidden. You can hide it even more as you desire. You can see the wire I've got trailing down here. Naturally, you would uh, <laughs> conceal that a little better. I'll switch it on now by putting the battery in. The battery's in, and uh, by screwing it up, it switches on. And you'll see that there's a red light comes on to confirm the battery's there. And then shortly afterwards, a green flash, confirming that the uh, PIR has uh, come on. You can. Uh, some operators have taken to using bits of tape to conceal the... Uh, seal the lights. Um, uh, others use smears of mud if uh, the significance of a light is going to be that significant. There was the green flash. Um, but uh, in this instance I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, there's the aerial there which is uh, pretty indistinguishable um, but uh, you could obviously cover that uh, in, in leaves or foliage as you like. Okay, here's the transmitter, here's the receiver. Okay, here's the receiver. Um, battery's in. I just screw that up. And this is again a remind you for the uh, PIR. And you'll see on screen it all comes to life. There you go. The flashing is uh, <laughs> the capture of the video, not the uh, not any problem with the uh, device. So it takes five minutes to set the tamper alarm. If anyone messes around with the transmitter, a tamper alarm will go off. Uh, and it takes three, up to three minutes, um, between three and 15 minutes to get a GPS signal uh, come through. Um, sometimes it's instant, but uh, not other times. So there's also a battery indication on there confirming that the transmitter is in uh, good working order. What I'll now do is approach the PIR um, I'll actually approach it by walking away from it and we'll see if it triggers.
Well, here we are approaching from the other direction. You can see the uh, path going that way. There's the white document indicates where uh, I've left the PIA unit and uh, the, the transmitter. You can see the white document, you can't see the transmitter, and uh, we'll approach there. It's pointing down at the ground, so we probably won't uh, be detected until, until we're within four or five metres. There we go. I've uh, approached the, uh, the PIR space, and you'll see that there's a trigger going off confirming there's an IR signal on, on node 4. You can't see where it's come from. You can see my document there on the bush, and that's, that's, that's where it is. The range is typically up to 10 metres, um, and that's confirming that uh, the IR signal is there. I can reset that by pressing that button there, and when it comes back on you'll see the IR is now in white, confirming that that was number 4 that set off the PIR. So here we are, a different situation, slightly wider, um, and where they're coming from. So um, we're going to um, use the brake wire unit. Uh, there's the brake wire transmitter down there. There's the spool. Um, what I'm going to do is deploy the wire um, before I by bailing out the spool and bring the spool to the transmitter. First, there's the spool. Here's a, a reasonably stable twig, and I have bound the wire brake wire around there. I don't know if you can just see it flickering. It's uh, very difficult, but uh, what I'm going to do is now bound it. I'm, I'm going to set it, and you set it by m uh, two means. One of them is this. It's melting the wire. You'll see it glow in a second. There. And that melting will fuse what is actually two core wire together in there. You can just about make that out, I think, in my video. What I'll then do, because that wire is just tied loosely onto that twig at a reasonable height, I'm going to pay this out and I'll take it through this gorse bush to give it some anchoring and then walk it over to the tree over there and plug it in. Um, so without stepping on it, because it's going to protect this path, come up through the gorse bush. it out all the way. It's easy to do it this way around because the, the uh, spool releases wire more easily than other things. And uh, just to make sure it's secure, I'll take it right round the tree. And throw it over there so I don't walk through my own wire and then I'll plug it in. Okay, so there's the tree which I've uh, taken the wire round. Plug the spool into the device um, and merely tighten up the screw. And you'll see the red flash and a couple of green flashes in a second, which confirm that it's uh, come on to the brake wire. There you go. Oh, sorry, single green flash. All right, so that's now set. Clearly, you can conceal the transmitter as much as you like, uh, as long as the aerial is standing proud and vertical. The vertical is more important than being proud, actually. Um, so there is that set there. It takes uh, three to five minutes again for the uh, tamper alarm to uh, trigger. So we'll leave that for a while, and then we'll walk through the wire down the bottom and uh, we'll see it break. So, there's the brake wire. Can you see it? I can't. I'm going to approach it. It'll, uh, there's my... Trig, uh, my uh, twig that I've got attached to. I can't see the thing. Um, coming up close, can't see it at all. There's no way you can see it in the background, and uh, we've had um, uh, mine detectors on it, and they've not been able to see it. So I've got my receiver handy, and I shall walk through the wire. I don't feel it at all. There you are, I can feel the vibration in my hand, uh, and there's the, uh, the uh, brake wire system uh, being flagged on node number one. And sure enough, off we go, the um, PAR signals come up. We can reset that by pressing the button on the top, and if you press it again, we'll see that we've acknowledged that alarm, but it still tells us it's on node number one. Um, what we'll now do is tamper with the device just to see if the uh, tamper alert goes off. So 
So there's the transmitter. Can you see it? When I pull that up and move it around, what we should get is a temper alert. Sure enough, in my pocket, we've got a big temper alert against number one. So that tells you that uh, somebody's picked it up. What we actually have in the range is a blank plug that you can put into the transmitter. So instead of the, the brake wire, we just have a, a blank plug that fills that across. And uh, the advantage of that is that you can use just the transmitter without the bulk of the brake wire or the wire from the PIR to uh, set in a kit or an, on a door, anything that uh, is going to move that will set off a uh, tamper signal irrespective of anyone being uh, seen or break, breaking a brake wire. There we go. That's a cobweb um, SF in a, in a bag. There's four transmitters in there and two receivers in the standard uh, pack. You need two of these packs if you're going to carry more than that. Um, normally we find that operators deploy them in their, their pockets rather than in the bag. Uh, what I've not shown you today is the GPS capability. Uh, each transmitter can uh, pick up and, and uh, emit a, trans, a GPS signal, locating those transmitters precisely um, or within the, uh, the performance of the GPS. And they can be, that information can be picked up either with uh, an integrated system, which we uh, have um, uh, worked on several, uh, and or you can have it um, forwarded through to our mobile application, uh, which uh, uh, enables you to have a Google map which you can locate each transmitter. It also shows you on that uh, application what sort of signal has gone off, uh, what the battery state is, whether it's been, it's been tampered with, um, sufficient information for you to be able to determine you know, with a map uh, exactly where your transmitter is and what's happened. Uh, Cobweb, it's a way of keeping you safe. Cheers.